Montana This Morning continues on Montana's News Leader. Another shakeup in the Trump administration. I'm Hannah Dobo with more on the third national security advisor to be named to the president's staff. And Republican candidates for the U.S. Senate squared off in a debate at MSU's campus last night. Coming up, political reporter Mike Dennison reports there wasn't much actual debating. It explains how that might affect the election. No thunder and lightning at the debate last night, but we did have some rain falling over yeah. here Ooh, in nice southwest segue. Montana. Yeah, like that? yeah that's good. I that's good. saved go. up for all week for this one. Yeah. <laughs> good job there, Segway Sam. That was fantastic. <laughs> Uh, we, uh, we have been dealing with a little bit of rain off and on overnight. Uh, most of those showers are gone into the mid to upper 30s or low 40s. I don't think we're going to see much in the form of rain as you head into the day today, but we are going to see these temperatures back into the mid to upper 40s uh, for the afternoon. Tomorrow, we could be dealing with snow in the forecast. We got a little of everything in your forecast, including a nice warm up next week. We'll talk more in depth about that, of course, coming up here in just a few minutes. Thank you, 631. Along with Missy O'Malley, I'm Segway Sam. Our top <laughs> story, the revolving door at the White House continues to turn as yet another of President Trump's top advisors is out. CBS's Henna Doba has our latest from New York City. The president confirmed yesterday what had been speculated about for weeks, tweeting in part, I am pleased to announce that effective April 9th, Former United Nations Ambassador John Bolton will be my new national security advisor. I am very thankful for the service of General H.R. McMaster, who has done an outstanding job and will always remain my friend. Bolton, who will be the third national security advisor to Mr. Trump, seemed somewhat surprised by the timing when asked about it on Fox News, where he's a frequent contributor. I didn't really expect an announcement. Uh, this uh, this afternoon. Bolton is known for taking some hawkish positions. In 2015, he penned an op-ed in the New York Times titled, To Stop Iran's Bomb, Bomb Iran. And in February of this year, he wrote in the Wall Street Journal about the legal case for striking North Korea first. Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer tweeted in part about his appointment. Mr. Bolton's tendency to try to solve every geopolitical problem with the American military first is a troubling one. I hope he will temper his instinct to commit our armed forces to conflicts around the globe. When he served as UN ambassador, he was actually not able to win confirmation during the Bush administration. He was a recess appointment. So that speaks to some of the controversy that, that he has stoked in the past. The National Security Advisor is not a position that needs to be confirmed by the Senate. Hanadoba, CBS News. And General McMaster was not the only departure from the White House yesterday. John Dowd, the lead attorney representing Mr. Trump in the special counsel investigation, also stepped down. In other news this morning, the four Republicans who want to oust Democratic U.S. Senator John Tester this year had their first full-on debate on Thursday night on the MSU campus here in Bozeman. But the evening saw a few fireworks among them and more agreement than not. MTN's chief political reporter Mike Dennison was there and has our story. The four candidates, State Auditor Matt Rosendale, Big Sky Businessman Troy Downing, former State District Judge Russell Fagg of Billings and State Senator Al Olszewski of Kalispell, have appeared together at numerous GOP dinners this year. Thursday was their first chance to take on each other in a debate, but they rarely took the offensive. Fagg took a jab late in the debate, saying that as a Montana native, he would be immune to attacks from Tester about being a relatively recent transplant like Downing or Rosendale. The Democrats are going to unmercifully beat up two of my opponents because they moved here nine years ago and 15 years ago. It may not be fair, but it's the truth. If you put me on that ticket, that takes that argument away from Senator Tester. However, the candidates did at times stake out some frank views on policy. Olszewski said he likes the Trump tax cuts, but that spending cuts must be paired along with them. If we're going to have tax cuts, we're going to have to have entitlement reform, and we're going to have to find a way to decrease our spending. Spending, it is a, You have to have a one-two punch in this area. When asked about health care, Downing said it's time for America to tackle the elephant in the room, runaway costs. Why are we not looking at the problems of hospital billing practices? Hospitals just make up numbers having nothing to do with the value of goods or services. Why are we not looking more closely at the problem with the pharmaceutical industry? 
And Rosendale said he'd like to go even further on federal tax reform. We still have a lot of room to go on tax reform. We have to flatten out the tax rate. We still have seven different brackets that people are dealing with. Every time we have all of those brackets, we have different special interests that are able to go in and lobby, and they continue to carve out exemptions for folks, and it, and it drives up the cost. But the candidates generally agreed on almost every issue, from crackdowns on immigration to peeling back government regulations whenever possible. MTN political analyst David Parker, a political scientist at MSU, also attended the debate. His take? It was a battle of personalities. And if you're looking for policy differences, oh man, I didn't really see many at all. Really, this was a debate about style and biography. At some point, they'll have to sharpen the knives and talk more about why they're the one to defeat Tester. And they have just 75 days to do it. Reporting from Bozeman, Mike Dennison, MTN News. Just as a friendly reminder, the primary election to choose the GOP nominee is June 5th. And the Lewis and Clark County coroner says preliminary findings from an autopsy of two murder victims show that they died from multiple blunt and sharp force injuries. The bodies of David and Charlotte Taylor will, were found in their home by a family friend on Monday night. Prosecutors have charged the couple's adopted son, Caleb Taylor, with two counts of deliberate homicide. They claim Taylor murdered his parents showered in the home to clean up and then disposed of evidence in various locations around Lewis and Clark County. Taylor is being held on a $500,000 bond. Meantime, the Lewis and Clark County Sheriff's Office continues to search for the second person of interest in the case, Andrew Duncan. Anyone with information on Duncan's whereabouts is being asked to call the Sheriff's Office at 406-447-8293. Also, detectives with the Missoula County Sheriff's Office are investigating a homicide case. A woman who was found in the middle of the road earlier this month, 47-year-old Susan Wood of Missoula, was found on Coal Mine Road near the Missoula Cemetery on March 3rd. Wood suffered blunt force trauma to the head and died in a hospital on March 16th. She was last seen on video near the north end of Lowe's on Reserve Street in Missoula. Detectives are working with state and local agencies to identify the suspect or suspects responsible for Wood's death. Anyone with information about Wood or suspects is asked to contact the Missoula County Sheriff's Office. That number, 406-258-3337. And in other news, on your Friday morning, the Gallatin County Board of Health met behind closed doors on Thursday to talk about legal action against the Corner Club at Four Corners in Bozeman. MTN's Morgan Davies has more on the standoff between the board and the restaurant. The issues between the City County Board of Health and the Corner Club dates back to 2015. It was due to a septic issue and resulted in Health Officer Matt Kelly revoking the restaurant's food license. However, the Corner Club has remained open and serving food despite their licensing being taken away. Now, the board has filed a preliminary injunction to stop the restaurant from serving food, stating that the Corner Club is endangering the public's health. In response to this, the restaurant attorney, Art Wittick, says the establishment has been working with a wastewater engineer since 2015. Health officer Kelly cannot inspect the establishment, however, due to Montana law. Health officials can only inspect licensed or permitted retail food establishments. Since the Corner Club does not have a license to operate, it cannot be inspected. Court documents have been filed that Judge Elizabeth Best out of Cascade County will now be assigned to the case. Judge Best will have jurisdiction as this case continues to move forward. In Bozeman, Morgan Davies, MTN News. Now, Wittick says that the restaurant plans to continue to serve food unless a judge orders it to stop. Certainly a story we're going to continue to follow here on Montana This Morning. Absolutely. We are so happy to have you with us here on this Friday morning. Up next, an unexpected story out of a prison in Iowa. The inmates working on a unique project, a New York opera. But first, here's John Dickerson with a look at the headlines on CBS This Morning at 7 o'clock. Good morning ahead on CBS This Morning. We're at the White House with details on the new National Security Advisor, John Bolton. What his past positions suggest about the president's foreign policy. And we talk with the FCC Chairman Ajit Pai about what the government is doing to fight the dramatic rise in robocalls. See you at 7.